In this edition of Reshape 333, I want to remind every tired leader of an important leadership lesson that was modeled by a bunch of undergraduate students who play basketball for St. Peter's University. I hope this helps. I want to give you the lesson and I want to do it in the next 333 seconds. Let's get at it. Two weeks ago in the last Reshape 333, I told you I'm a hockey fan, really. I'm not really a basketball fan. But every year I do kind of get sucked into the NCAA Final Four March Madness tournament each year. This year there were some great stories like every year that developed. And, and this year one of the team stories was, was a team that shouldn't even have been there. One of the great stories this year was, was a team that didn't even make it to the Final Four weekend. St. Peter's University is a small, liberal arts Catholic university that exists on about 25 acres of land in the middle of Jersey City, New Jersey. Student population, 2,000 students, give or take a few. The St. Peter's Peacocks had a miraculous NCAA basketball run this year. They knocked out Kentucky, they knocked out Murray State, they knocked out Purdue. They knocked out Purdue in the round of 16. And then they finally lost in the round of eight to, to North Carolina, which stopped their final run to the final four. But out of 148 teams seeded 15th in history, they are the only team in history to make it to the round of eight. And before this season, they'd never even won an NCAA playoff game. Perhaps St. Peter was on their side. But here's the leadership lesson that I don't want you to miss. Here's the leadership lesson that I want you to get from a bunch of undergraduate kids that you just can't afford to miss. Many of us in leadership understand how challenging it has been in this last leadership chapter. This last season has had its, its ups, its downs, its pivots, its turns, its constant government mandates. And then you add to all of that the, the people that you were leading and, and some of them are cheering you on and, and others of them are criticizing your game plan at every pivot and then some of them are crying foul as you stand at the foul line to throw your next shot. And now, if you're a pastor or a church leader, the, the expectation is that, is that you get everybody back now. The, the expectation is, is that everyone comes back into their seats and, and you begin to rebuild some new momentum and, and re, you reimagine a brand new future. You, you lead with, with renewed energy and passion and you chase a new vision, right? That's the expectation now. But the truth is you're spent. You're not thinking about vision, you're thinking about a nap. Don't bug me about a dream I can't see. And for many, the last two years have, have created a type of a vision fog. So many pastors lack clarity about next Sunday, let alone next month or next year. But, but here's what I want you to do, both as a leader and in your next leadership team meeting. You see, the Peacocks never looked to the Final Four tournament. The Peacocks never looked to that final weekend. The, the Peacocks never asked, how do we become one of those four teams? They never chased the one big dream. The Peacocks simply looked to the next game. The Peacocks simply looked to the next half, to the next point, to the next foul shot. And the miracle continued. Big dreams, small steps. So here it is. Here's the lesson. Write it down, stick it on a wall, put it on your computer, put it on a whiteboard, put it where you can see it. Here's the lesson that I want you to remember and not miss from these undergraduate kids. Stop thinking about what to do. Start thinking about what to do next. Write that down. Stop looking at the mountain. Stop looking at the huge dream, stop looking at the end goal, stop looking at the big final four weekend, stop thinking about what to do and start thinking about what to do next. As a leader and as a team, start thinking about what we need to do next. What are our priorities right now? 
write down the next three steps that you need to address to get you there. That's all you need to see today, the next three steps. I love what Adidas did for the Peacocks. Each of the Peacocks players received a t-shirt that Adidas had produced for them. And on the front of the t-shirt were three words, more is possible. More is possible. And more is possible. If you stop thinking about what to do, the end game, and start simply thinking about what to do next. What are your next three steps? I hope that helps. Thanks for leading, everyone. Thanks for leading.